You used to be on YouTube. I did. <laughs> what kind of content? Um, can I be categorised? I don't think so. Okay. Was it more like so, vlogging? Yay and nay. I tried to... I always try to be a bridge. Mm. Um, I tried to build a bridge between the realities of taboo topics of being a Muslim from a non-Muslim household mm. and being a convert. I think at the time, this, this was, we're going back seven, eight years ago now okay. when I started. Yeah. So it was when everyone was starting up the YouTube hype and it was becoming a thing. I feel like the knowledge of things back then wasn't as high as they are now because you can research anything through TikTok or Twitter or wherever. It was a very tabu situation for people to, to see converts, to see people that don't have Muslim families. And I would basically do vlogs and do videos on my life and what it was like for me. As much as I'm a Muslim and I prayed and I did everything, Christmas day is still a thing in my household. Mm. Alcohol is still a thing, pork is still a thing in my household. Although I don't indulge in it, yeah. I still have to live with it day to day. And the reality of it is, what's the lesser of two evils? Do I not involve myself with Christmas day with my family and completely isolate myself and then my family hate Islam and hate me and it creates that separation? Or do I not celebrate Christmas with them, but help them make sure that the food that they have there is halal and I, I cook it for them and I play my part and I sit with them as a family, not so much in the celebration, but I spend that day with them because that's the only day that we get together. Mm. Um, and I just broke down like loads of situations like that, like having dogs uh, as a Muslim is like a, a big thing. Is it? Yeah, there's a... There's different opinions. It yeah. really depends on what opinion people go by. Okay. Um, but dogs are not very clean animals. Oh, right. So it is um, cleanliness. Yeah. So, yeah. So there are things of different opinions on having a dog living within the house. Mm -hmm. um, I had a dog that lived <laughs> in the house that I okay, had had right. since I was like 11, 12. Yeah. And I used to vlog it and I used to talk about it. So now what am I meant to do? As a Muslim, I've become Muslim. I have a dog. Am I meant to abandon him? Am I to just take him and give him away and then my family go crazy? Like, how do I deal with a situation like that that you don't have to deal with? Yeah. And I just used to do loads of things like that and topics like that. How do I get a family that don't know Islam to understand that me as a teenager, I'm not lost and confused. I've actually studied and I've actually researched and I've actually done a lot <laughs> yeah. to know that this is what I want to do. How do you convince an 80 year old Christian woman that this is what I'm doing and I'm not being radicalized? Yeah, no, I understand. So yeah. that was, my whole YouTube was based around taboo, realistic situations. <laughs> Did it go good for me? No. Why? Because of the ignorance of the Muslims. They, okay, they right. didn't get it. Okay. Um, I got bashed a lot for it, publicly and online. Wow. Um, I had created a decent platform for myself, so I was recognised in the streets. I couldn't really go out without being recognised couldn't just walk into a mosque and not know that I'm going to get recognised. Um, and yeah, it, I think about three or four years in, it got a lot, my mental health deteriorated and it was literally a decision between me or social media. I see, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I made a very conscious decision that it was going to be me and I deleted everything and I came off of everything and I wouldn't say became shut off, but I wasn't willing to conversate with anybody in, in public or have a conversation with you to where I've gone, why I've gone, will I be coming back? 
it wasn't a conversation. It never existed in my head. <laughs> no, fair enough. But I mean, I feel like you, you've kind of, you've kind of created a platform that's necessary, if, if, if I can say that. In hindsight, would I have done things differently? Yes. Would I have deleted the platform? No. Mm -hmm. Even though I do feel like at that moment in time, it was very necessary. I think now with the person that I am now, I would have done things differently and I probably would have never have deleted. And I probably would have never have, I probably might have had a break, gone away for a little bit and come back. Mm. But what's done is done. Would you restart a platform? To kind of be that voice for, for young people that are struggling in situations that you, you kind of grew up in? I'd love to say <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, probably no. Mm. Not that I, without sound, not sounding arrogant, not that I don't think I could do it or I don't have the capability to do it. Yeah. I quite like the way things are now. Is it more like having the peace than kind of not having... Yeah, it's just not the ongoing battle, the ongoing mm. explaining, arguing. Even if I didn't give them time of day, seeing people arguing in comments is draining. Yeah. Having people constantly have conversations to you about you and to you about what's going on is just it's too much. I like the little platform that I've got now where it's just the horses and it's just <laughs> la da there's nothing too serious. It's just that. No, fair enough, yeah. So. And when, because, I, because I'm, not, I'm not personally in the public eye, mm. I'm not, I don't really have a big platform. And, mm -hmm. um, would, you, would you say that people that do have a platform and put themselves in the public eye, when, when all these comments happen, because they do, mm -hmm. well, you know, when you go on Instagram posts, you see all these comments and everyone loves to talk about other people's lives and etc. Yep. Um, does the creator, does it affect them? Yeah. It does. I don't care what anybody says. They can sit there and say, it doesn't bother me, it does. Even if it's not long term, but just for that moment, it kind of burns you a bit, it does. And you see everything. Mm. As much as people go, oh, you know, like I don't care. And you do see the comments, although you don't give them time of day, you do see it. Yeah. Everything, every DM, every comment, every video that's made about you, that's, that you're tagged in, every podcast that they've mentioned your name in, you see it all. You just make a choice to react or not. Yeah, yeah. And it, it does, it gets frustrating because sometimes when it comes from people that you don't even know, you're like, wait, why don't you like me? <laughs> what, what have I done? Why, why do you actually hate me? Why yeah. are you actually taking your time out of your day to, 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 to bash me like this, to talk about me like this? It's like, oh. And it, I think it's worse when it's someone that you quite like. And then you see it and you're like, oh. Wow. I was yeah. a fan of you. <laughs> <laughs> quite liked you. <laughs> but no, yeah, yeah, it is disheartening and it is, yeah. No, I can, I can understand that, yeah. I think a lot of people forget that people have feelings and they, they just hide behind their profiles and, and say whatever they want in the comments. And Social media creates comfortability. They think that because they follow you, they know your life and they're entitled to a say in your life and mm. they're entitled to not only just saying what they want, but it's, well, you put yourself out there. So of course I can comment. 